We have homeworld-like 3D spaceship battles mixed with realistic ship movement physics of the Expanse in this world-first look at the combat demo of Ephemeris. Playing this demo was an amazing experience for me and I want to thank the developer for this exclusive access. This is just part of the overall gameplay that Ephemeris is going to offer to its future players as the solo developer is building a complete 4x space sci-fi game. You will explore a whole galaxy, expand into other solar systems, exploit them for resources to build massive fleets, and exterminate all opposition in glorious real-time battles with homeworld-like ship formations and carrier fleets, along with realistic physics-based spaceship movement like in the Expanse. One extra feature you will surely love is the ability to jump in and manually fly any ship, all guns blazing. Now I will go into more detail about these gameplay elements and you can check out the description below for links to this game. First off, formations. There are already 4 of them available in this gameplay demo and they work majestically, just like in Homeworld 1, because each ship is an individual in Ephemeris and can be part of a 2 ship wing or a 1000 ship strong armada. On the other hand, Homeworld 2 and Total War fans will recognize the unit cards as a system of organizing ships into separate squadrons. You can merge and separate these squadrons on the fly, mid-battle and keep your fleet both organized and flexible. You want a giant wall of ships to blockade a chunk of space? No problem! A huge claw to go after a massive battleship? It takes just one click. Now, some of these might not be in the final version of the game, but what might be is a way for you to mod or simply save your own custom formations. That would certainly be an amazing feature. The interface is a work in progress, so don't mind it and follow my ships as they glide from one formation into another using actual physics-based movement we have all enjoyed in the Expanse TV show and books. Just look at them form up this beautiful and deadly X formation and fire away at these destroyers. I personally get chills down my spine watching this as I relive my childhood memories of playing Homeworld 1 for the first time 20 plus years ago. The importance of player controlled formations and free groups of individual ships cannot be overstated as we all know what backlash developers got from their player base when ship squadrons and fixed unit sizes were introduced in Homeworld 2. The last currently available formation is the Cone. It is somewhat similar to the Claw formation, but it is much more dense and looks like a hybrid between the Claw and Wall formations. It is of course much better for medium-sized ships like corvettes and frigates than the small fighters or the massive destroyers and battleships. Those have their own preferred formations, but not exclusively, as the use of a formation will depend a lot on the number of ships in it. A small wall formation made up of fighters can sometimes be more effective than a large X or claw formation depending on the target and its size. But they will excel at the X and especially claw formations in large numbers and big engagements. On the other hand, a fleet of destroyers or even battleships in those formations would not be very effective because of their size and weapon range and would work best in a wall formation where they can cover each other and focus fire at the same time. But if you only have a few big ships, an X or even a claw or cone formation wouldn't affect their combat ability too much. I personally consider formations to be a cornerstone of games which feature ship battles in 3D space and it looks to me in this combat demo that the developer of Ephemeris is on the right track. You can share your own impressions in the comments below and we will discuss this further. Due to the Ephemeris using a different, more simulated style of physics-based movement for its ships, as opposed to the arcade style in Homeworld, it takes some getting used to how individual ships and entire formations move through space. Because when ships in Ephemeris want to slow down, they actually rotate along their axis much like the Rossi does in the Expanse and point their main engine exhaust in the opposite direction. This is the only way to reverse or stop in space as there is no air drag to slow down craft once they cut their engine power. Front thrusters would never be powerful enough to cancel out the main drive's momentum fast enough to allow for combat maneuvers required by the fast-paced gameplay. That is why the linear and angular axialization of ships changed the look and feel of the 3D spaceship combat in this game compared to Homeworld or some other similar game. 
If you are wondering right now which games come even close to Homeworld, I will show you in a future video. Because of all the actual physics involved, every ship class, from the small fighter to the massive battleship and carrier, follows similar 3D movement patterns and rules. This is less World War II strafing and dogfighting done by smaller craft, while big ships do fewer 19th century sailboat broadsides. To give you the most accurate comparison, I have to dig really deep into the past all the way to free space combat simulation games from Deep Silver Volition and Hyperion Entertainment. These came out at roughly the same time Homeworld did and the space combat there is very similar to what Ephemeris is designed to be like. Slow, lumbering capital ships bristling with weapons and turrets, rolling, pitching and yawning along their axis with very little forward motion to get the best weapons to bear against their targets. Smaller ships flying right alongside them, defending them from fighters and bombers which can hover in place and hammer at them relentlessly. Oh damn, now I want to play free space games again and I have already lost count of my playthroughs. As you saw from the gameplay of this combat demo already, there are the familiar ship sizes and classes. The nimble, lightly armed and armored fighters, the heavier armored corvettes, much bigger frigates with many weapons, large destroyers and simply massive battleships. The carriers were not part of this demo, but there are some older gameplay videos in which they can be seen. The other ships formed queues to dock into the hangars and float in. Flying out is also simple and undocked ships then follow the carrier in set formations. What is awe inspiring in this game is the true scale and size difference between the ship classes. When you zoom into a single ship, there isn't much in the empty and vast expanse of space to compare its size to. That is, until you get another ship in the same frame. Then you start to realize the true scale of things. Another feature I want to mention when it comes to ships is that there are two types for most classes, the light and heavy variants. In the 4x gram scheme of things, ship design is going to be heavily varied and there will be no one design to beat them all. On top of this, the research system from which you gain tech for ships, like power supply, engines, weapons and shields, will be randomized. This is because, instead of following a research tree, in Ephemeris you don't know what your scientists are going to invent next. And this helps boost the replayability as you won't always have the same things available at the same time during a playthrough. There is more to it than that, but I will go into it in a future video about the game. The biggest weapons each ship can equip are dictated by its weight class. But as the ship's armaments and components will be chosen and customized by the player, its size is not entirely tied to any role. As for shields you see in these battles, all ships can be equipped with such energy shields and there are variants with different strength levels. Weapons in Ephemeris come in four different sizes and with three different types of hull mounts. The smallest weapon size is usually only available for fighter class ships and it's suitable for combat against other fighters. But in large enough numbers, even mosquito bites can take down an elephant or a battleship in this case. Medium, large and huge weapons go on bigger ship hulls and take increasingly more energy from the main power plants. This is another subject which would take a whole video to explain in full. Weapon mounts on the other hand can be fixed, slightly pivoting or gimbal type and lastly turret type. Fixed mounts are the cheapest and require the least power. But the main drawback is that the entire ship has to maneuver to line up a shot. This means that a huge weapon placed on a fixed mount and on a big and slow ship will be close to useless against smaller and more agile ships. For that big ship to fight off a squadron of smaller ships, it needs smaller weapons mounted on turrets, since those will have the required cones of fire to target small moving ships. Those turrets will also act as point defense systems against incoming missiles and torpedoes. Unfortunately, this demo didn't include missiles and torpedoes as they are being worked on at the moment by the developer, but we can see them in other gameplay footage. One more thing about ships and combat I have to mention are features similar to what you're used to in homeworld games. Those are stances, called combat modes in this game, and also engagement modes. For now, there are three engagement modes in Ephemeris. Hold fire, fire at will and engage at will. First one is quite simple, 
The squadron will attack only the targets the player explicitly commanded. The main difference between fire at will and engage at will is that ships in the latter mode will not only fire at, but also actively pursue ships that come into their combat range. As for stances or combat modes, there are currently two available, stationary and evasive. In the evasive mode, they naturally move around their target and try to evade some of the incoming shots. Meanwhile, in the stationary mode, they can maximize their damage output as they are keeping all weapons locked on the target, but at the same time, they are an easy target themselves as they just hover about. There is also the skirmish mode as an extra combat stance, and what it does is to make the squadron, with this option toggled on, try and match the velocity of their targets while shooting and engaging them. This makes it perfect for capital ship slugfests. When it comes to the entire 4x world you will be playing in on the macro scale, it is a galaxy map which consists of a randomly generated set of star systems acting as nodes. There are already different planet types and these affect the colonization potential, fertility and production output of the planet, among other management sides of gameplay. There will be a food exporting and a trade network system to help specialized plants and a bunch of other plant relevant elements. All of this is designed to be easy to pick up and prevent a lot of micromanagement considering the potential size of star empires. Fleets that move from system to system will spend multiple turns traveling, which means that the total war comparison rings true here as well. Real-time battles at the local scale and turn-based mechanics at the galactic scale. With multiple AI enemies present on the maps, the developer is working on making sure the AI can handle both other AI and the player to give you some real challenges. How will he handle the late game steamrolling that happens so often in these types of 4x games? We will have to wait to find out, but you can tell me your ideas in the comments. Some of the systems used in Stellaris and newer Total War games should be an adequate starting point. Lastly, we have the surprising feature of jumping into the pilot seat of these ships and manually running and gunning across space. It reminds me a lot of free space in third person view, just without all the UI elements like radar, system energy distribution, weapons and hull status. Will these be added? I don't know, but I wouldn't mind at all to tell you the truth. If a ship you are directly commanding was part of a squadron and in a formation, you won't be limited by it and you can fly on your own. I just have to first figure out how to do proper maneuvers before I can start really having fun with this feature. Even if it remains simple like this, it will give you an amazing front seat to spectacular space battles. I will come back to this game when there is more to show and until then you can watch my other videos using the cards on the screen or in the description. Thank you for watching and happy gaming!